because we trusted people that said, we'll help you. A decade ago, predatory lenders began wreaking havoc on innocent Cleveland homeowners, throwing tens of thousands into foreclosure. You lose sleep, you can't eat, you lose weight, you don't, you really don't know, you know, what you're gonna do. After years of making mortgage payments on time and building equity in their homes, homeowners fell prey to shady mortgage brokers whose predatory lending practices threw hardworking people into financial ruin. Devastated, sick. totally devastated, sick. Anti-predatory lending laws were beaten back by lobbyists working for major banks. On the national scene, leaders like Alan Greenspan and Ben Bernanke were asking what crisis Greenspan recently admitted. I was aware a lot of these practices were going on. I had no notion of how significant they had become until very late. The feds were asleep. Save our homes! But Cleveland-based ESOP already knew that the city and Cuyahoga County were on the brink of a national catastrophe. Fight back. ESOP sprang into action. Community organizing efforts sounded the alarm. Banks were made to account for bad loans. The results were momentous, formal agreements with lenders to help homeowners avoid foreclosure. In order for us to be more effective, we need to find more folks like ESOP to help us reach out to consumers. ESOP was now central in the crusade against subprime loans going south. But by 2003, predatory lenders were still growing in prevalence. The fight escalated. It's still uh, cataclysmic. No community in the United States of America has been affected worse than ours. The only county that will have lost more population than Cuyahoga County in a 10-year period between 2000 and 2010 will be Orleans Parish in New Orleans. Well, they had Katrina, we had out-of-control lenders. As foreclosures mounted, ESOP's success of securing lender agreements, assisting homeowners with loan workouts, and foreclosure prevention advocacy. How are you? Good. Uh, my name is Jimmy, and I work with ESOP. And we're earned ESOP statewide and national recognition for creating real solutions to the real problems facing people in foreclosure. Move forward. Ohio's elected officials have helped bring ESOP's trailblazing foreclosure prevention model to families across the state. They do it, I think, better than anybody in the country. Uh, the fact that they do it so well in uh, this state, um, it's why the state government has turned to them and said, we need you to expand your reach. It's just crucial that ESOP continue to develop these offices, continue to provide these services in these areas that are simply starved for it. And my hope is that they open more offices in more counties um, because there's no end of the need that I can see at this point in time. With the foreclosure crisis, abandoned homes and neighborhood blight have spread like community cancer. To see homes in this condition and to see people taking advantage of them. I mean, and every... ESOP is again leading the charge, this time in land reuse. In Slavic Village, ESOP is there to assist community development corporations acquire property from banks like these on East 72nd and East 74th Streets. Instead of blight, rehab, and renewal, because ESOP has the power to demand action from lenders. They can challenge lenders, they can challenge the city, they can um, rock the boat and make things happen. Jim Payette's family has lived in this home since 1963. He's lived through the rise and fall of Slavic Village. Jim Payak says the redevelopment around him is giving him lots to look forward to. Before this stuff started happening, I was looking around for a new place to live, a new place to call home. Now, if all these good things are taking place, I, I want to stay here now. Now that something's actually happening, and it's about time. I'm proud to call it my home again. It's exciting because we're, we're a part of a, of a really uh, emerging revitalization effort in, in urban America. 
to be at the epicenter of that here in Cleveland. Um, I love it. ESOP continues to grow its presence. ESOP can sit at the table with lenders. ESOP can stand beside a homeowner to negotiate a workout plan. But still, community organizing remains at the heart of ESOP. Can't accept it. She's rejecting. A shark attack like this hit on Chase Bank to get answers to bring the evading lender to the table creates a new generation of community leaders. Everybody in here is a warrior and they're all here with vested interests for you. Everybody. Everybody everybody here is for the same purpose, for your rights, for people to listen. When Anita Gardner first found ESOP three years ago, she was a homeowner facing foreclosure. With ESOP at her side, Anita stood up to her lender. She saved her home, and she found her voice. Who are suffering from the same problem, the same perpetration that has been thrust on us over and over again. It's a very powerful feeling because you finally feel like you're at least hitting Goliath in the toe. At least you're getting his attention, you know. It made me feel like finally somebody's going to listen to me. It's finally, I, I have my friends, my family, I have my warriors with me, you know. Uh, it made me feel really good. It made me feel powerful. It made me feel like, wow, this is what I needed all along. I think the power of ESOP's always going to be in its membership and the grassroots activity. They serve as a model. It's, it's perhaps as important as anything else about ESOP. Joining the team, fighting back has been a transformative journey for Anita. She's now an ESOP homeowner leader, working to save other families' homes. Why does she do it? I need a community. I don't need empty houses. I don't need to live in a cemetery. I need neighbors. If it happened to you, you're not the only one out there. This furniture that's on these sidewalks is not growing up through the sidewalks. It's from people being put out of their homes. Why not? It needs to be done, it has to be done.